by making up for lost time. Yesterday Today, the show that brings you the best of yesterday's radio today. I'm Jake, in like a lion, Westbrook, and with me is McLean, out like a lamb, Westbrook. I see you're getting into the mood with our first episode of spring. Yeah, McLean, well, as much as I love winter, I'm, I'm happy as anyone else when the snowpack starts to melt, temperatures rise, and the sun comes out. Spring is always a welcome sight in my book. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty stoked about driving with the windows down weather finally coming back. Well, let's get the show started with some, well, unexpected guests. Hey, fellas. How you doing? Well, if it isn't our private detective neighbor, Frankie Spork. We're doing just fine, Frank. What's the latest with you? Got any good cases recently? Well, as a matter of fact, that's what I'm over here for. I have this case I was wondering if maybe you two could help me with. You want our help? Well, I don't know how we can help. We're not private detectives. Ah, oh, no, don't worry. I'm not asking you to put yourselves in danger or anything. I, I just need you fellas to run sort of a diversion. A diversion? Just what kind of case is this? Well, I can't tell you everything just yet. And it's probably better that you don't know. We can't help you on a case if we don't know what it is. Well, actually, you definitely can. Frank. Yeah, okay, okay. You two, um... You two ever pay attention to the weather? You know, we were just talking about the weather, actually. Uh, spring is the theme of our episode this week. No, no, I mean, uh, like our local weather forecast on TV, the weatherman. The local guy? Yeah, Dave Downport does the local weather forecast on Channel 7. You ever watch it? Uh, not really, no. Well, I do. Every night without fail. You'll find me in front of the tube with my TV dinner. Yeah, I never miss one of Dave's forecasts, unless I'm on a case. So you must really like the weather guy. Nah, I watch him out of spite. He's got some of the worst forecasts you've ever seen. You can tell how to dress just by assuming the opposite of whatever Dave Downport says. If Downport forecasts a sunny day, you better grab an umbrella and get ready for a flood. If he says it's gonna snow, put on some shorts and flip-flops, cause you can bet there's gonna be a heat wave. Well, I, I mean that figuratively, of course. I'm morally opposed to men wearing flip-flops, but that's neither here nor there. Wait, so you're investigating this guy because his weather forecasts are bad? Frank, I hate to break it to you, but you're gonna have to investigate a lot of meteorologists if you want to put a stop to bad forecasts. No, 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 that's just the thing. Dave Downport is terrible at predicting the weather, except for the last two weeks. What do you mean? Every day this week and last, Downport's forecasts have been impeccable. Yeah, I couldn't believe it at first. Uh, yeah, I thought it was just a fluke. But then one fluke turns into two, and two flukes into three. Pretty soon, you've got two straight weeks of flukes. Fourteen straight perfect weather predictions. When Downport says it'll be partly sunny, it's partly sunny. He predicts a high of 52 degrees, while well, he can bet the farm on that being 52 degrees. Can you bet on the weather? Yeah, I'm not sure, but that maybe what's going on here. Wait, Frank, Frank, Frank. Are you implying that the local weatherman is rigging the weather? Yeah, I'm not implying anything. I'm just stating the facts. The investigation will take care of the rest. I'm gonna figure out just what is going on over at Channel 7 that has suddenly turned Mr. Downport into the next Notre Dame. Nostradamus. All right, how are we gonna help you out on this? You two are gonna pretend to be big fans of Dave Downport. All these TV guys are eager maniacs. Give them some compliments and you'll have a meeting out of your head. Ask him for a tour of the place, and that should get him away from his desk, and I can snoop around long enough to find out what's going on. Frank, this might be the silliest thing we've ever done, all right? And that's saying a lot. We were trying to trap leprechauns last week. So you aren't going to help me? I didn't say that. I'm with you all the way. I love a good caper as much as the next guy. Yeah, and I've always wanted to find out how a green screen works. Let's move out. All right, up first on the show, folks, going to play a little uh, Sammy Kay and his orchestra. I 
I'm as restless as a willow in a windstorm. I'm as jumpy as a puppet on a string. I'd say that I had spring fever, but I know it isn't spring. I am starry-eyed and vaguely discontented, like a nightingale without a song to sing. Oh, why should I have spring fever when it isn't even spring? I keep wishing I were somewhere else, walking down a strange new street, hearing words that I have never heard from a girl I've yet to meet. I'm as busy as a spider spinning daydreams. I'm as giddy as a baby on a swing. I haven't seen a crocus or a rosebud or a robin on the wing, but I feel so gay in a melancholy way that it might as well be spring. It might as well be spring. busy as a spider spinning daydreams. I'm as giddy as a baby on a swing. I haven't seen a crocus or a rosebud or a robin on the wing. But I feel so gay in a melancholy way that it might as well be spring. It might as well be spring. the story in these words we hear from Don Cornell I came here to talk for Joe he wants me to 
let you know He can't keep that date with you tonight I came here to talk for Joe Gee, that kid sure loves you so And when he gets the chance He said he'd write That boy has so much courage I've seen the things he can do But he never had the courage To tell you how he feels about you He's got a perfect alibi He can't be here and in the sky So I came here to talk for Joe Spring is nearly here, and many of our listeners will be getting out their gardening tools, their overalls or shorts to again try their hands at raising their own vegetables. For most of us, gardening is an enjoyable hobby, and it certainly is a great thrill to see the results of your work come out of the ground right before your eyes. In other lands, many people will also be watching their spring planting grow. CARE, the cooperative for American remittances to Europe, proposes to help meet that need with their new vegetable seed package. It contains 28 varieties of vegetables. In order for families in Europe to start planting, you should order the CARE seed package right away. Total cost, with delivery guaranteed, is $4. Send your orders to Nonprofit CARE, 50 Broad Street, New York, and help a family help themselves. Swing and sway, let's swing and sway. Swing and sway with the three barons. If the sky looks rather cloudy and you're low and feeling blue, say don't fret, come on and step. Swing and sway if you're sad and feeling lonely and your troubles trouble you. Say don't fret, come on and step. Swing and sway. To you who are pining, to you who are crying, this is our advice. There's no reason to be gloomy, dance the gloomies all the way. Say don't fret, come on and step, swing and sway.
made the night a little brighter Wherever he would go He would go The old lamplighter of long, long ago His snowy hair was so much whiter Beneath the candle glow, candle glow. the old lamplighter of long, long ago. You'd hear the patter of his feet as he came toddling down the street. His smile would hide a lonely heart, you see. If there were sweethearts in the park, he'd pass a lamp and leave it dark. Remembering the days that used to be For he recalls when dreams were new He loved someone who loved him too Who walks with him alone in memory He made the night a little brighter Wherever he would go He would go at night are all aglow he turns them on when night is here he turns them off when dawn is near the little man we loved of long ago wild root cream oil again and again the choice of men and women and children too Get Wild Root Cream Oil, Charlie, it keeps your hair in trim. You see, it's non-alcoholic, Charlie, it's made with soothing lanolin. You better get Wild Root Cream Oil, Charlie, start using it today. You'll find that you will have a tough time, Charlie, keeping all the gals away. Hiya, Baldy, get Wild Root right away. Well, you know, usually we don't just give tours to people that show up unexpectedly at the TV station here, but hey, since you two are such big fans of mine, I figure it's okay to make an exception. Oh yeah, we, we're, we're definitely big fans of yours, uh, Dan. Uh, Dave, Dave Downport. Right, Dave, yeah, that's, that's what I said, right? Yeah. Sure. Say, wasn't there three of you when you guys came in? Oh yeah, our friend uh, Frank had to leave. He got too intimidated by meeting you. Oh, I see. <laughs> well, he doesn't have to be. I'm just like anybody else. I put my pants on one leg at a time. I just had them pressed. Oh, very nice, very nice. Anyway, this over here is our green screen. This is where I do most of our weather forecasts. If you see me standing in front of a giant moving map, it's really this green wall here. Wow, yeah, that's really something. Say, just how does the green screen work? Oh, that's easy. You see, while I'm standing here... Yeah, all right, I, uh, dumb huh? port, I figured you out. The jig is up. Who are you? Jeez, Frank, couldn't you have waited until after he explained how the green screen works? Look, Dave, in case you were unaware, I'm Frankie Spork, Private Eye. I've been keeping tabs on your little weather forecast these last couple weeks. 
You had the most accurate predictions I've ever seen. What are you so worked up over? Oh, I'm an excellent meteorologist. Oh, drop it, Downport. A month ago, you couldn't tell a cirrus cloud from a stratus. It's only been the last two weeks when you started telling people what the weather's actually gonna be like. That's ridiculous. Oh, yeah, it's ridiculous. Almost as ridiculous as this. A laptop? It's not just a laptop. This is a secret web page of the National Weather Service, bringing up to date incredibly accurate information. And, most importantly, giving you exact 100% true weather forecasts to anyone with the password to the website. Uh, how, how did you get access to that? I guessed your password, Downport. Next time you should make it something a little more complicated than Handsome Dave 1. Ah, shoot. Yeah, that's on me. Wait, what does all of this mean? This means that we've been lied to for years. Every TV weatherman, every radio forecast, every website. They've been giving out intentionally wrong forecasts this entire time. They have access to real weather forecasts, but they deliberately get it wrong on purpose. They, they say it's gonna be sunny when they know it'll rain. They say the blizzard of the century's on its way when they know it ain't. But... but why? That's a question for Dave here. All right, down, poor Nick, with the story. What's going on? All right, all right. You crack the code, sport. It's spork. Really? I anyway, yeah, yeah, you figured it out. When you become an official meteorologist, you get access to the National Weather Service secret forecasting website. It tells you the exact weather forecast with 100% accuracy for the next few decades. Really? The exact weather forecast years in advance? Yeah, pick any date for the next 30 years and it'll be in there. Uh, October 23rd, 2027. October 23rd. Uh, this says it'll be cloudy, a high of 51 degrees, and no rain. Wow. Uh, April 16th, 2035. Uh, let's see. Yeah, alright, alright, it's not a toy, come on. But if weathermen already know what the weather is going to be like, why do they give us inaccurate forecasts? Well, every meteorologist is told to only give inaccurate weather forecasts about 30 to 40 percent of the time. What on earth for? Well, if the public knew that we could accurately predict the weather with 100 percent certainty, well, think of the effect on society. There would be no uncertainty in life. There would be no worry or fear. Everything could be planned for. People would get complacent. Society would grind to a halt. People in the streets lounging around, not worried about earning money to buy clothes or paying the air conditioning bill. Well, then that brings us to the final piece of this jigsaw puzzle. What's your part in this, Dave? Why are you pulling the plug on the operation and exposing the whole thing by giving out actual real forecasts? What are you trying to pull? Is it your conscience? Are you trying to open people's eyes to the truth? No, 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 no. Nothing like that. I'm just in a labor dispute with the weather service. I'm trying to get a raise. What? Yeah, I figure threatening to become a whistleblower and revealing the whole dirty truth is the best way to show that I mean business when it comes to contract negotiation. You're playing a dangerous game, Downport. Yeah, this happens every once in a while. Some weathermen try to get a little more money by challenging orders from the higher-ups and going on a little hot streak with their forecasts. I figure it's my turn to get in on some of the action. Does it work? Are you kidding? The Weather Service is sitting over their lawyers to negotiate my contract today. They should be here any minute. But what about the truth, Downpour? Doesn't that mean anything to you? What about honor? Yeah, what about my car payment, huh? I gotta look after me. It is infinitely better to have a few good weathermen than many indifferent ones. George Washington. Anyway, while this whole thing gets sorted out, Let's give to the second half of our show an episode of Father Knows Best entitled Spring Cleaning. Stay tuned now for Robert Young starring in Father Knows Best, which follows this listening reminder. Tomorrow evening, there's wonderful comedy entertainment on two great shows when you set your radio dial to this same NBC station. Listen first to The Bob Hope Show, 
with guest David Niven and the musical stylings of Miss Margaret Whiting and Les Brown's Band of Renown. Then stay tuned for the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show, featuring 30 fun-packed minutes of mirth and music. It's an hour of truly enjoyable radio entertainment, so be sure to hear it all. And remember, tomorrow evening on many of these same stations, listen to a special program, These Are Your Friends. Now it's Father Knows Best on NBC. <laughs> now listen to Father Knows Best, transcribed starring Robert Young as Father. <laughs> Welcome to Springfield and another half-hour visit with the folks in the white frame house on Maple Street. Sit back and enjoy life with the Andersons, Kathy, Bud, Betty, Margaret, and Jim, as the head of this typical American household again sets out to prove that father knows best. It's Saturday morning in Springfield. What's more, it's a beautiful, warm spring morning. The kind that makes a man feel like getting outdoors and working in the soil. As a matter of fact, as Jim Anderson comes down to breakfast in his robe and slippers, those are pretty much the thoughts he expresses. Like this. Oh, man, what a morning. Look at that sky out there, honey. Ever see such a perfect blue? Makes you want to get outside. Uh, dear. Makes you want to get your hands into the good soil. Get close to nature. To the grass and the flowers and the, the berries. Well, you're pretty close to them right now. You're sitting on Kathy's toast and strawberry jam. Huh? Oh, for gosh sakes. Oh, look at that. Why does that kid have to leave everything on chairs? Well, I tried to warn you, but you were so wrapped up in nature. Uh, will that jelly wash off my robe? You can try it. Should work as long as it's not grease. Sometimes I suspect that girl spreads jelly on toast just for me to sit on. She rarely ever eats it. Uh, did I use hot water? No, just warm. Hey, say, Mom, could I go over to... Hey, what's Dad doing? Washing clothes? <laughs> no, he just got a little too close to nature. Huh? I'm, uh, not doing so hot on this, Margaret. Why don't you use the washing machine, Dad? That's what we got it for. Look, Bud, I... I've got some things you can wash out as long as you add it. Sweatshirts, blue jeans... But I'm not doing the washing. You're not? No. Well, you better be careful, then. You're getting your robe all wet. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Leave him alone, Bud. Uh, Mom, uh, can I go over to Joe's house? Well, I don't know. What are you going to do? Oh, just mess around. Seems like a good day for just messing around. Well, I think maybe there's a little messing around you could do here. Yes, Bud. How would you like to come outside with me this morning? We'll start getting things in shape. What things? Bud, don't eat that breakfast. I just put it on the table for your father. You've already eaten. I have? <laughs> Jim, I'll finish that robe. You sit down and eat your breakfast before your son beats you to it. Okay. Like what things, Dad? Huh? What things are we going to get in shape? Oh, you know, uh, maybe paint the fence, repair it if it needs it, prune the roses, get the ground ready for a garden. It's a wonderful day for it. Uh, pass the salt, would you please? Could we start digging a swimming pool? Swimming pool? They don't cost so much, Dad. Oh, no, of course not. What's a few thousand dollars? You can put one in for $79.62. Pass the syrup, please. <laughs> Honest, Dad. I don't doubt it at all. Claude Messner probably makes them out of used plastic. No, this family put one in for just $79. I, uh, I read about it in that home and house magazine. Uh-huh. They used the basement of a house that was blown away by a tornado, and they picked up a lot of scrap iron at the junkyard for reinforcing, and their friends poured the cement. I see. $79. Yeah. Well, while we're waiting for a tornado to come along, we'd better get to work on the fence and garden first. After that, could we start digging the pool? Who knows? Oh, boy, come on, let's get started. <laughs> <laughs> 
Are you fellows really serious about wanting to work? I've never felt more like it. There's something about a spring day like this that really gives you the old zip. Yes, sir. It does a man good to get out and work with his hands. Well, that's fine. Because I'm starting spring house cleaning today. And I'll need a lot of furniture moved and a lot of scrubbing and waxing done. So how about it? Pass the syrup, bud. <laughs> Maybe you didn't hear what I said. I'm starting spring house cleaning. I heard cleaning. what you said. I uh, was just thinking. Uh, actually, it would be more to your advantage if we got out and did the outside work. You know, do all that heavy stuff. You know, the work that's too heavy for you and the girls to do. Uh-huh. Dad's right. I don't like that scrubbing either. No, it's... <laughs> it's uh, not that, bud. It's just that I actually have so little time to work around home that I ought to try to channel my efforts where it will do the most good. Uh-huh. Well, you understand, honey. After all these years, I should. Well, it's not that I don't want to help you in the house, honey. No, of course not. It's just that, well, I just don't want you to have to get out and do that back-breaking work. I see. After all, that's my job. Mommy! How big a pool are we going to dig, Dad? Now, we're not going to start on that right away, bud. Mommy, where's my toast and jelly? Your father sat on it. He did? Well, I didn't mean to do it. Yes, you did. No, I didn't. Every time I leave my toast and jelly on a chair, you always sit on it. <laughs> well, now, did you ever stop to think that it's your fault for leaving them on chairs? It's ruined half my clothes. Costs a lot of money to get them clean. And that strawberry jelly is the worst stuff in the world to get out. So, what are you going to do in the future now? Use some other kind of jelly? <laughs> Oh, me. Come on, bud. We'd better get going. Okay. Would a ten-foot pool be too long? Where are they going, Mommy? Out to break their backs tilling the soil. What? <laughs> Never mind. What other kind of jelly have we got, Mommy? One kind is as bad as another. Might as well stick to strawberry. But Daddy doesn't like to sit on that kind anymore. <laughs> to come and help me move the buffet. I can't budge it. Okay, I'll be there in a minute as soon as I clear the table. Why can't Father do some of this house cleaning work? He's home today. Yes, but he's going out and work on the garden. Well, let's get the buffet moved. It's not fair, that's what I think. Well, there's nothing to do about it. Kathy, when you get through eating, maybe you can start washing the dining room windows. I'm going outside and help Daddy. Help him do what? I don't know, but he needs me. <laughs> oh, great. Well, let's go in the dining room and move the buffet. This whole thing is unfair, Mother. Where do you want it moved? Well, I've got the floor clean this far, so we can move it right over there. Okay. Ready? Mm-hmm. Oh. Oh. oh, gee, this is heavy, isn't it? Ooh. Come on, come on, once more. Uh. Um... I'm busy, bud. Huh? Could you find me a pencil? Find one yourself. I need it right away. Oh, that is, Dad uh, needs it. What's he going to do? Spade up the garden with a pencil? No, he needs it to write Are you down. sure you boys aren't overworking yourselves? Not hmm? yet. Well, you want to be awfully careful. Oh, could you help us move this, bud? I'm helping Dad. What's he doing? Sitting in the den. <laughs> That's about what I figured Wait, I think I know where there's a pencil Right in the desk drawer on the den Want us to come and open the drawer for you? No, you won't need to We can handle it Mother, something's got to be done about this Dad, look in the desk drawer. I think there's a pencil in there. I already found it. Oh, good. Let's see what you've got written down so far. Oh, I've just gotten started, is all. Let's see. Work schedule. Hey, that looks keen. Well, if you want to get something done, the only thing to do is organize your work. Yeah. Then you know what you're doing, and you can really accomplish something. Yeah. What do we put down next? Dig pool? No. No. <laughs> 
No, we better start on the fence, I believe. A couple of good coats of paint will protect the wood from the spring rains. Okay, put that down and then put down dig pool. Well, I think we'd better put down repair fence first. Got to do that before we can paint it. Yeah. Remember this, son. If you're going to do a thing, do it right. Don't do a superficial job. Start from the ground and work up. Yeah. Except for swimming pools. It's best to start from the ground and work down. <laughs> well, we're not digging any pools right now. I suppose what we ought to do is go out and check the fence, estimate just how much repairing it needs. Dad... Maybe we'd better take a little rest. <laughs> well, not yet, bud. We've hardly gotten started. We don't want to get over-exhausted. Well, let's see now. Repair fence, yes. Uh, we can see what it needs as we go along. Number two, paint fence. Uh, number three, uh, well, as long as berry bushes are next to the fence, we might as well cut those back next. You see, this is how good planning can save you a lot of time. Yeah, Oh, I'm getting sleepy. Number four, well, we'll make that prepare flower bed. Number five, say, you know what would be a great idea? Let's build a little flower box for your mother. Put it right outside the kitchen window so she can look at it while she's doing dishes. She'll love that. Margaret! That pool is getting awful far down on the list. <laughs> <laughs> Margaret, would you come in the den for a minute? I'm cleaning house. Well, this will just take a second. Got a surprise for you. I'll bet. <laughs> I always get a kick out of all the fuss women make out of house cleaning. Yeah. <laughs> well, here I am. What's the big surprise? I hope this is worth climbing down off a stepladder for. You'll love it, honey. How would you like to have a nice little flower box outside your kitchen window? So you can see it while you're washing dishes all day. <laughs> <laughs> what a... Beautiful, sentimental thought. I thought you'd like it. <laughs> Honey, where are you going? Back up the ladder. <laughs> Dad. Yeah? Mom didn't seem awful enthusiastic about that. Well, she's pretty wrapped up in her house cleaning right now. I'll tell you what. Instead of building her a little window box, we'll build her a big one. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, let's go measure the kitchen window, and then we'll draw up some plans for it. Okay. We can save ourselves a lot of time and headaches by accurate planning. Gee, look at Mom balance on that ladder. She's pretty good. We've got to find a tape measure someplace. Hey, Mom, could you find us a tape measure? What? Bud Anderson, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. What did I do now? Asking your mother to climb down just to go find you a tape measure. What do you think she is, a performing monkey? I don't want her to perform. We just got to measure something for our work. <laughs> what work? I think you'll find one in my sewing basket, bud. Thanks. Look in the sewing basket, Dad. Mother, I'm not going to put up with this any longer. You're not? No, and you're not either. Well, what are we going to do? I don't know. I just wish there was some way to trap them into helping us. I'll get it. Well, there isn't any way, so we might as well go ahead and get it done and stop wasting time feeling sorry for ourselves. Hello? Who? Oh, yes, Mr. Bentley. Yes, he's home. Do you want to talk to him? Just a minute, and I'll call him. Who is it? It's Mr. Bentley from the home office in Cleveland. He's in town, and he wants Father to come down and see him at the hotel. Hmm... If I didn't know better, I'd think he planned this himself. Wait a minute. Mother, I've got it. I've got it. Now, just a minute, Betty. What are you going to do? Shh. Hello, Mr. Bentley? Betty. Uh, father's all tied up out in the backyard right now, but he wonders if maybe you'd like to come out to the house instead. No, Betty, no. He thought it might be more comfortable here. No, no. Oh, well, that'll be wonderful, Mr. Bentley. Goodbye. Good heavens, child. He can't come here. The house is a mess. I know it. And Father would die if Mr. Bentley saw it like this. So now he'll have to help clean it up. Isn't that wonderful? Act two of Father Knows Best in just a moment. 
Monday night brings musical entertainment on the NBC radio network, and this Monday evening you'll hear wonderful entertainment when you set your dial to this station. The Railroad Hour will feature Gordon McRae and Eileen Farrell and Victor Herbert's musical masterpiece, The Red Mill. When you listen to the Railroad Hour Monday, you'll hear such favorite melodies as Every Day is Ladies' Day because you're you and in old New York. Later, the Telephone Hour will present guest pianist Seymour Lipkin, who will offer music by Schubert, Chopin, and Rachmaninoff. Monday's Voice of Firestone will feature the tenor voice of Ferruccio Tagliavini and the music of Howard Barlow's orchestra. Be sure to listen to NBC's Monday Night of Music. An underhanded plot has been hatched to induce Jim Anderson and Bud along with him to lend a helping hand to the spring cleaning festivities. However, Jim doesn't know this yet as he and Bud blithely measure the kitchen window for its future flower box. Like this. Uh, 34 and a half inches. 34 and a half inches. Check. 34 and a half. Check. You keep out of this, shrimp. Well, I want to help, too. This is men's work. Now get lost. Ah, oh, turn blue. <laughs> uh, 29 and a quarter. 29 and a quarter. Check. Twenty-nine quarters, check. Dad, tell her to cut it out. Kathy, cut it out. Father. I believe we have all our measurements. Now, if I can just climb down out of here without breaking the faucets. Father, I have news for you. I have news for you, too, Daddy. You're kneeling on my jelly sandwich. Huh? (laughs) Oh, for Pete's sakes. Kathy, why don't you eat these things instead of leaving them lying around? How can I? You're always sitting on them. (laughs) Father, Mr. Bentley just called. Bentley? In Cleveland? Well, why didn't you call me? It was probably important. Well, don't get excited. He's not in Cleveland now. He's in town. In town? At the hotel. But you don't have to go down there. He's coming out here. Out here? That's right. Well, what ever gave him an idea like that? I don't know. (laughs) <laughs> Probably thought it would be more comfortable I wish you'd let me talk to him Margaret He certainly picked a fine time to come out, didn't he? House all torn up and everything Margaret Don't shout, dear, I'm coming Margaret Bentley's here from the home office And he's coming out here to the house this afternoon Yes, I heard that Well, what are we going to do? The rugs are all torn up, the draperies are down I don't think you can get the place back in shape by then That's right, Father. We can't. Well, in that case, there's only one thing to do. That's right, Father. Keep him outside. What? (laughs) He'd probably rather sit outside on a wonderful day like this anyway. But, Father... Matter of fact, he's sort of an outdoors guy. Jim, you can't just have him sit on the ground or the porch steps. Yeah, that's right. I'll tell you what we'll have to do. We'll all have to pitch in and get the lawn furniture down from the rafters in the garage. Oh, no. And then you make up a bunch of sandwiches and some lemonade and serve it to us out in the backyard. Or maybe iced tea would be better. Dad, what about these measurements and the thing we're going to build? We'll we'll get to it. Put the measurements in the den so they won't get lost. Okay. Wait a minute, Jim. Where are you going? I've got to go up and put on something a little more presentable. And I'd better shave, too. Oh, dear. Say, that stepladder will have to go out to the garage so you can start getting the lawn furniture down. We won't need it. We'll just swing by our tails. How do you do that, Mommy? For a couple of monkeys like us, it won't be hard at all. Mother, don't look at me that way. I'm sorry. You and your big ideas. I was only trying to help. Now we not only have the house to clean, we have to go out and move lawn furniture, too. Well, Mother, I was only... And make a few thousand sandwiches. Are we going to have a picnic, Mommy? (sighs) This is no picnic, believe me. (sighs) I've just got to sit down a minute. My, this feels good. Mommy? Yes, Angel? You're sitting on my jelly sandwich. (laughs) What? Oh, for heaven's sake. Mother, do you think these are enough sandwiches for those hard-working slaves out there? Oh, it should be. I wish we had more ice for the tea, though. 
We ought to put in a little ground glass. Just look at Father and Mr. Bentley lolling back in those deck chairs like a couple of retired millionaires. Oh, this is a man's world, all right. Well, I guess they do have some business to discuss. I'll bet. Probably both worried sick over who's going to win the Kentucky Derby this year. Where's that other tray, Betty? The silver one? Oh, I don't know. What gets me is why Bud and Kathy think they have to loll around out there, too. They haven't got any business to discuss. Well, I haven't had any time to do anything about it. Oh, it burns me up. Men. Ugh. Well, don't cry about it. You know whose fault it is that Mr. Bentley's here. I know it. Well, do I look all right to go out there? I dressed in about a half a minute. Yeah, you look all right. I don't know when we're ever going to get this house straightened up again, let alone finish cleaning it. Well, maybe Mr. Bentley will leave pretty soon. Well, I don't know what we'll have for supper tonight. There's not a thing in the house. I'm not hungry anyway. I have to open a can of beans or something. Well, come on, let's go out and serve the millionaire playboys. Okay, let's go. Can you get the door? Yeah, I, I think so. And try and keep Bud and Kathy from beating Mr. Bentley to all the sandwiches. Kathy's already got a sandwich. Uh-oh, if it's jelly, we're in trouble. Oh, boy! Look at that Bud sit up, like a fox spotting a wounded rabbit. <laughs> Look, food! Just stay where you are, Bud. Well, well, what have we here? How are you, Mrs. Anderson? Good to see you again. Don't get up, Mr. Bentley. It's good to see you again, too. My, you look lovely. So fresh and rested. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Bud, wait till you're served. Fred, this is my other daughter, Betty. I, I don't know whether you remember her or not. Well, it's been a few years now. The Kansas City Convention, I believe. That's right. You're certainly getting to be a very pretty young lady. Well, thank you. I wish I were about 30 years younger. <laughs> <laughs> Would you care for some lemon in your tea, Mr. Bentley? Just a touch, thank you. I don't want any tea. Nobody asked you. Ah, this is fine. I was just telling Jim what a nice, friendly backyard you have. I like this idea of outdoor living. It's, uh, it's so American. Uh, yes. Jim tells me he spends quite a bit of time out here. Well, it's good for a man to get his hands in the soil. A little manual labor can be real relaxing. Well, I can see you people know how to live. You relax and enjoy what you've got. No fuss, no hustle and bustle. Take it easy. That's the ticket right there. You're so right, Fred. I guess that's what keeps you looking so young, Mrs. Anderson. Oh, you have no idea what it does for me. <laughs> hey, where's my jelly sandwich? Uh-oh, don't anyone get up. <laughs> Daddy, are you... Uh, just take one of those on the plate, kitten. Well, okay. <clears throat> I'll have another one, too. Bud. Please, thank you. Yes, sir, I admire the way you people live. So different from my home. Everything's always at such a high pitch. I like a comfortable place to live in. Well, that's the way we feel, too. Yeah, I like a place that looks like it's lived in. You ought to see our place. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd love to. I know it's got just the kind of an atmosphere I like. I want to see it before I go. Well, it, uh, it's really such a nice day outside. It's a shame to waste it inside. Uh, yes, we shouldn't lose a second of this weather. I'll have another sandwich, please. Bud, what are you doing, swallowing them whole? <laughs> well, I don't blame him. They're certainly good. I can tell you've got a wonderful cook in your family, Jim. She's the best, the very best. Yes. Yeah, uh, you ought to try one of her meals. Well, I'd love to. Uh, <laughs> oh, no, no. I'm no good at all. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds just like my wife. I tell you, there's nothing I like better than a good home-cooked meal. Uh, well, really, you know, I'm... You know, I'm on the road a good deal, and I tell you, I'm, I've got to that point where I can hardly stand to go in one more restaurant. Why don't you eat here? <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, by George, I'd love to. You couldn't have said anything that'd make me happier. Oh, well, we'd love to have you, Mr. Bentley. Look, Fred, I, I... I might as well tell you the awful truth. Jim? My wife's in the middle of spring cleaning and the house is a complete mess. It is? <laughs> That's exactly what my wife is doing. That's why I made this trip, to get away from it. <laughs> Maybe we could uh, uh, go out and eat. No, no, you don't, Jim. Nobody's going to talk me out of this. But I'll make you a proposition, Mrs. Anderson. Jim, Bud, and I... We'll pitch in and finish the house cleaning if you and Betty will cook up the best meal you've ever cooked. You, you mean that? Look, with the years of training Mrs. Bentley has given me, I'm an expert at spring cleaning. Mr. Bentley, you're a doll. Come on, Jim. Better get to work. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Have you got some old fishing pants or something we could put on? Uh... Yeah, I guess so. Uh, come with me. Yeah. Hey, there's my jelly sandwich. <laughs> Shh, your father's going to change his trousers anyway. Come on, bud. Okay, soon as I get another sandwich. Betty? Yes, mother. <laughs> you and your big ideas. <laughs> The Andersons will return in just a moment. Every weekday, Monday through Friday, you're invited to enjoy the wonderful daytime programs on the NBC radio network. And when you listen, you'll be in good company. For every day, millions of Americans tune for such fun-packed programs as the Bob Hope Daytime Show, the phrase that pays, and welcome travelers. Then there are your friends on the daytime dramas. Such intriguing stories as Pepper Young's family life can be beautiful, Young Widder Brown, The Woman in My House, Just Plain Bill, and The Road of Life. Every day as you do your housework, keep the radio dial set to NBC and this station so that you may hear and enjoy these and other fine daytime programs. The listening's fine in the daytime on the NBC radio network. Well, the white frame house on Maple Street is all spick and span again. Dinner's over, and their guest and leading house cleaner, Mr. Bentley, has gone back to his hotel. Jim and Margaret are in the den, relaxing. Like this. Well, I must say, this was quite a day. Yeah. The house looks surprisingly good. Thank you. Isn't Mr. Bentley wonderful? Oh, he's all right. But of course, Bud and I never got that window box built for you. Well, that's all right. I'll try to bear up somehow. Well, maybe next weekend. Uh-huh. Oh, say, the Phillips wanted us to drop over this evening for a little bridge. This evening? Mm-hmm. Oh, gosh, I couldn't make it. I, I'm too tired. Tired? Yeah, I don't understand it either. Never did get outside and do any heavy work. All I did was housework. I just don't understand it. <laughs> no, and neither will any other man. Good night, dear. Good night, Margaret. Join us again next week when we'll be back with Father Knows Best, starring Robert Young as Jim Anderson. Father Knows Best is an NBC Radio Network production in cooperation with Cavalier Enterprises. In our cast, Regine Vanderpile as Margaret, Rhoda Williams, Ted Donaldson, Helen Strom, and Earl Ross. Father Knows Best is based on characters created by Ed James, written by Paul West and Roswell Rogers, directed by Arthur Jacobson, and transcribed in Hollywood. This is Bill Foreman speaking. Tonight, play Truth or Consequences with Ralph Edwards on the NBC Radio Network. Yeah, all right, then. It's settled. You'll receive a raise from the National Weather Service and renew your commitment to providing only partially accurate weather forecasts. Yep, sounds good to me. Push that contract over here and I'll give him a signature. Can you believe this? Selling out your principles. 
Hey, Frank, don't forget those lawyers forced us to sign a non-disclosure agreement. We're not much better off. I don't know how I thought being a part of a government conspiracy would feel, but this isn't it. Yeah, those NDAs wouldn't hold up in court. They forced us to sign those. Well, if you want to fight it, be my guest. Well then, with everything taken care of, I'll be on my way. Yeah, all right. Hey, I'll see you at the Weatherman's Convention next month. Yeah, of course. Say, you guys are aware that you're not allowed to tell anybody about what you've learned today, right? Don't worry. I'm definitely not going to reveal government secrets to anybody. <laughs> I would never. That's the spirit? Yeah, I was being sarcastic. Well, just know that the NDA you sign has no room for loopholes. We've checked. The National Weather Service will not allow a leak. Hey, is that a microphone? You can't be recording this. Oh, don't worry. It's just for our podcast. Yeah, it's not like anyone's actually going to hear it. Oh, okay. As long as it's for a podcast, that should be fine. <laughs> Goodbye. Well, I'm going to bring this phony NDA agreement to my lawyer. I'm going to find a way out of this. Is your lawyer any good? Ah, yeah. He's this guy I met recently named Willie Huckster. He's a real ace lawyer. <laughs> Smart, too. If anyone can get me out of this, it's him. Ah, well, good luck with that. Good luck with that. Well, if you want more Yesterday Today, you can visit KISU.org or wherever you get your spring weather podcasts. Once there lived a chicken who would say chick, 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 all day. Soon that chick got sick and tired of just chick, chick. So one morning he started to say, Chickory chick, chala chala, check a la me in a banana cabalica wallica. Can't you see? Chickory chick is me. Chickory chick, chala chala, check a la me in a banana cabalica wallica. Can't you see? Chickory chick is me. Every time you're sick and tired of just the same old thing, saying just the same old words all day. Be just like the chicken who found something new to sing. Open up your mouth and start to say, Oh, chickory chick, chala chala, check a la me in a banana cabalica wallica. Can't you see? Chickory chick is me. <laughs> Time you're sick and tired of just the same old thing, saying just the same old words all day. Be just like the chicken who found something new to sing. Open up your mouth and start to say, Oh, chickory chicken.